Right, hello guys, and welcome to today's video. And today's video, as you can guess by the title and thumbnail, is going to be a Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 best settings and also a Xbox Elite Series 2 best settings for the controller. That's right, both in one. We're going to do both here in the video. So what I'm going to do is I am going to start with the Xbox Elite Series 2 controller. I am going to do all the settings for that. These settings, I do believe, also work with the Elite Series 1 if you are still using that and also the brand new Elite Series Core, which is the same controller, but just without the accessories. So you might not be able to do things with the paddles, etc. But the same thing will happen. You can use like the profiles, you can use this Xbox app here to be able to customize the controller in certain ways. So I will be sharing that with you guys, because as you guys know, Christmas is coming up, and I know some of you are going to be interested probably in the Elite Series 2. There's even a ability now, the ability now to actually customize the color of the controller through the, I can't remember what it's called, the Microsoft like Paint uh, thing, whatever it's called. But you can customize the controller now through color, and it actually looks really cool. Unfortunately, I obviously had this controller already, so I've got the basic black controller. But being able to customize control the controller and color, you know, change the color palette, and that, it's actually really, really cool. So, uh, yeah. You guys, I can imagine, will be looking at the controller and thinking, is it worth it, is it not? And uh, I'll get straight into that. But what I'm going to say is here, so if you guys aren't interested in the controller at all, or you are on PlayStation and, you know, can't have the Elite Series controller, uh, I will put a timestamp in the comment section be uh, down below, letting you guys know when I switch over to Modern Warfare 2 to share the settings that I have, because there is some interesting settings that I don't think people are using and you are going to want to use, especially with one specific thing that I cannot... Kind of even like begin to explain how good it is, and I don't think people are using it, so I will explain that when it when we get to that point. But yeah, in the comment section down below will be a timestamp of me when the Modern Warfare 2 settings starts in the video. But we will begin with the Call of Duty setup for your Elite Series 2 controller or the Elite Series 2 core or the you know the Elite Series 1. It all works for basically any of the Xbox Elite controllers, this will work for. So yeah. Let's get into it. Let's start with the mapping, okay? So, as you can see, nothing's changed here, right? Nothing has changed, except, obviously, we have the paddles at the bottom. Now, this is one thing I want to start with, okay? I've said this in many of my previous videos. It shows down there four paddles. It shows that I'm using the long paddle there. Where the A paddle is assigned, as you can see, and it shows a long paddle, I am not actually using a long paddle here. I am using a small paddle here. What I'm going to start with saying is, you do not have to use all four paddles. You can use one paddle, you can use two paddles, you can use three paddles. You can even use no paddles at all if you really want to. But for me, I just use the one paddle and where the A button is assigned there is the only paddle I use for jumping. That's all I use. It's the only one that I find necessary for me. Uh, I've tried experimenting with using like B and X and you know having those paddles placed, but I just can't get comfortable with it. It doesn't suit me. It doesn't suit how I play, you know, I, I sometimes accidentally hit the left side of the paddle, I just cannot get used to it. So for me, I use one paddle on the bottom right there, the A paddle, that is it, and it's not the long paddle, I do use the short paddle. Feel free to mix it up a bit and use the short paddles in the lower sections if you have to, because the problem I have with the long paddle is, I would accidentally hit it with like my fourth finger, uh, just, before the, just before my pinky, and I would accidentally like trigger that paddle just through the, my longer finger just being on the, on the paddle so you know you guys got to work it out for yourself this is one of those i will state this as well uh before we continue the video but if you know th this is kind of like what i find best and what works well for me but you guys can experiment the same with the modern warfare settings i will give you like a variation of like what sensitivities are good you know and what what you can do but this isn't a one size fits all this is kind of my best settings and you can use it as a base and go from there. So for instance, where I've got the A paddle as, you know, my jump button and everything, you might not want to have the jump button as, you know, that paddle. You might want to have reload, you want to have crouch, you might want to have like the Y button. I don't know, you might want to have certain things in certain ways, but I'm just showing you guys how I have it set up so that you guys can follow along and you can either copy it or and try it. And then if you don't think it works for you, experiment a bit. Maybe you want to use the long paddle instead of the short paddle. But yeah, so that's the map mapping right there. Nothing too crazy with it for me. But like I said, feel free to experiment with this. But for me, just in the bottom right there, short paddle and A. That's all I have for my paddle setup and controller setup. Next up, the left stick. This is on default. Nothing changes here. I left it on radial. Don't, it's not really that important. You know, movement's movement. That's all it is. But right stick, 
this is important. I find that True Diagonals is so much better than uh, Radial for this, just because it's more precise. It is way more precise, at least how I feel. I feel like it's, it tracks more. So if I spin it here, you can see it's going along. And I wish I had like a, a camera here. I wish I had like a hand cam or something to show you this, but it's more precise. Whereas Radial, a little bit, I don't know, I don't know if you guys can see that. It's a little bit more jagged, like it's a, it's not as smooth. It's not as smooth movement or, you know, it's not as precise, I'd say, than True Diagnose. True Diagnose is a true movement. Like you, Whatever you do on the controller is exactly what you are doing. And for me, this improved my aim so much in Call of Duty, like so, so much. It is so much easier to aim with this. You can, be, you can make those small adjustments, those huge adjustments. You can do it all because you know exactly the precise input that you are putting into the controller at that time. So for me, and what I highly recommend out of anything you do here with the Elite Series controllers, change the calculation to True Diagonals. Trust me, you'll love it. And when you guys do these things as well, don't just go into an online lobby and uh, you know expect this to work for you. Go into co private matches, play against the bots. You know you want to make sure this stuff works for you. And the same with like when I do my Modern Warfare settings, you've got to t you try it out against bots because if you don't, you know you might you might not get used to it. You might hate it. You might you know you might face people who are better than you. Obviously, it's Call of Duty. You know Modern Warfare. It's got skill based matchmaking. You don't want to be going against people who might be better than you or as good as you when you're trying to learn things for yourself. So, yeah, for my personal opinion, change this to True Diagonals. And you you will love this. Trust me, you will absolutely love this. If you don't love this, then that's fair enough. You can you you know you can change it back to uh, radial. Whatever you do, do not use Axis Independent. Axis Independent is just terrible. Do not use it. It's absolutely not great at all. Sensitivity curve. I leave these on default as well. Uh, you can play around with these if you really want to. Personally, I don't feel like these do that much. If I'm really honest, the only one that made any sort of impact was Instant, and even then. It, it just, I don't know, it doesn't feel like you can control it, to be honest. Like, yeah, it feels quicker, but it does not feel controllable. So for me, just keep this on default. They don't do too much, in my opinion. Uh, next up, triggers. Left trigger, right trigger. Now, this wasn't something I found when I originally bought the controller, like, three years ago. But, yeah, left trigger, right trigger. You want to change these to O and 1. Because quite simply, as you can see, the moment I press this, those triggers, they are going. That's it. That is done. The press there, as soon as I press it, it's done. And also, just to let you guys know, I am using the trigger stops. So on the left side, which is the aim, obviously, I, I don't have it on the uh, fullest setting to make it the trigger as little as possible. I have got it so the trigger fully pushes, just because it's, it's, you know, that's where you're aiming down your sight. You know, I don't, I don't really want to have, like, a short trigger on that, because the difference is with the right trigger, which is the one you want to be uh, the short trigger, in my opinion, that's the one where, you know, if you're using a foul or something or whatever the semi-autos are called in Modern Warfare 2, you want to be using the shortest trigger. So you use, as you can see, as soon as I press it, you know, we're going to be firing that thing, well, firing that foul or FAL or whatever as quick as possible. You know, you want to be firing the semi-auto as quick as possible in those moments where you're up close. And uh, yeah, left trigger though, even though I've got there on the littlest push, uh, my trigger is like set to be able to be fully pushed. So... You know, if I was doing a racing game or something, you know, I'd be able to, like, speed up and then, like, break and stuff. But, yeah, so left trigger, don't have it fully, you know, allow it to be maximum push, in my opinion. And the right trigger, have it as, have the trigger stop on. Have the trigger stop on the fullest setting, in my opinion, so you can have that trigger finger when you need it for the FAL, you know, the semi-autos, etc. And also just to be able to react quicker, I think, as well. I think, I think it just... It feels nicer as well. It feels like you, you got that press going and you you know you, you feel like you're shooting the gun as soon as you press it. So yeah, that's the way I'd do it. O and one on the left trigger, O and one on the right trigger. Next up, vibration fully off. Okay. I know some people play with vibration on for uh, that immersive feeling to feel like they're actually playing the game. Uh in my opinion, turn this off, okay? You do not want the controller. When you're trying to aim and be precise. If the controller is like rumbling in your hand and like jumping up and down, going left and right, there's no way you're gonna be able to aim precisely. It's just not gonna happen. Okay, you're like you're gonna be jolting around here and there. That you want those precise movements. It's like you don't want to have you know try and have precise movements whilst you you cut your controller feels like you're in a rally car, going over some speed bumps and that, and you've got your controller going here, there, and everywhere. Like it's just not it's not helpful. So in my opinion, have these all set to the min minimum value. 
you don't want any vibration controller. And also, when you get into the cool juice things, obviously, I'll make sure to show you guys just to turn off the vibration. You do not need it. You do not need the vibration at all. All right, you got this. This is a brand new little feature. It's up to you guys what you want to do. This doesn't, this doesn't give you more aim assist. I wish it did, but I've heard orange gives you more aim assist if you guys are interested. I'm only joking, but I, I just have it set to orange. But um, yeah, you feel free. It's just a cool little bit of customization. It looks quite cool. I wish I could show you this, guys, it, but the, the, the orange looks cool to me. It's up to you guys. You can change it to blue, red, green. Do whatever you want with it. Um, what next? I'll also talk about, so you guys can't see this, but I'll talk about it. The uh, thumbsticks and that. So on the left thumbstick, because I do get these questions quite a lot on my previous videos from like Black Ops Cold War and Vanguard, etc. So I'm going to make sure I include these this time because I feel like I, I forget these every time. The left uh, thumbstick is the domed thumbstick. So it's the one with, if you guys get the accessories, by the way. So if you buy the core version of the Elite Series 2 controller, which is the one without the accessories, you won't have these accessories. You do have to do a separate payment to have those accessories. So this is for the people who do have these accessories. But... The left thumbstick is the domed thumbstick with the rings and stuff. For me, personally, it just feels more comfortable to be able to move on that. You don't need this to be like an accurate thumbstick. You do not put, like if anything, do not put the tool thumbstick on this that comes with the, uh, comes in the accessory kit. Do not do that. It's not, it's not smart. It's not intelligent. I mean, if you, if you guys really want to, you can, but I wouldn't advise it. You, you just need something that allows you to move. You know, you go forward, left, right, and back. There's nothing you need to be precise with. Uh, the right thumb stick, though. So this is where it's interesting. So essentially, I do have a tool thumb stick, essentially. And what I mean by that is I have the default Xbox controller stick on there because on top of it, I have got a Black Ops 4 control freak. So that does, in essence, make it a tool stick. That's what it makes it. But it's more comfortable. It's better than the uh, long thumb stick that they give you, in my opinion. And I will highly recommend. I am not sponsored by Control Freak in any way, shape or form. But if Control Freak wants to, you know, help me out here and possibly give me a sponsorship, just uh, just give it to you guys know. I'm endorsing the product and I'm joking. But um, yeah, Control Freaks are fantastic. I've been using them for years now. Uh, I can't remember the, the first time I did, but like, I think all the way back in Black Ops 3, I think maybe, possibly. Control Freaks are amazing. They're just really, really cheap, really, really durable. They They don't break. They honestly are amazing. And they help with my aim tremendously, and I couldn't highly recommend them anymore. If I, I wish I had a code for you guys, but th there's other YouTubers out there who have codes. So if you guys want a control freak, I'd recommend one of those like tool thumbsticks. In my opinion, it gives you more the a uh, more precise aiming feeling because the taller the thumbstick, the more precise you can be. There's like a thing on their site that shows you what the science behind it is, but basically, a taller thumbstick does make it more precise. So if you guys want, or if you know, with the accessory pack and you want to use the tool thumbstick, go ahead, use the tool thumbstick. It will give you the same feeling that I have. But the, with the tool thumbstick for me, it's just a little bit too thin. And it's a little bit, there's not, like my thumb doesn't sit very well on it. So that's why I have the Black Ops 4 Control Freak. It's a lot bigger, like at the top, it's a lot more round. It's got a rubber feeling so my finger doesn't slip off. And it's just a lot better. So yeah, I use a tool thumbstick on the right and a small dome thumbstick on the left. But the the tool on the right is done by the default Xbox controller with the tool thumbstick, Black Ops 4 thumbstick on top. Uh, what next? I feel like there's a setting I'm missing. Ah, yes, I know, I know exactly I need to remember. Final thing is the tension in the sticks, okay? This is also very important. On the left thumbstick, I have left this as default. Do not change this in my opinion. You do not need the stick to be more like stronger. You do not need this to be more stiff. Personally, you just need that stick to flow. So again, you're moving left, you're moving right, you're moving forward, you're moving back. The right thumb stick, however, I have this set to the maximum tension. So with the little key that you get with your controller, you want to remove the thumb stick, turn it to the tightest setting so it no longer turns, and you'll see what it basically will do is the little like bit that spins inside, you will see will go right to the bottom. Once it hits right to the bottom, don't turn anymore. You don't want to break it. That is on the tightest possible tension for that stick. And the reason you want that, in my opinion, you want a bit of resistance because when you're doing those slight movements that you need or you try to do those quick movements and let's say your, you know, your thumb just like, I don't know, it, it just has a little moment where it, it, you know, it like tries to like move the thumb stick one way and then you, you know, you have that little moment where, I don't know, you get a cold, you get a cold chill or something and you flick to the right or that. It stops you from doing that because there's just enough tension in the controller to stop you from making those 
minor like mistakes basically and you know keep going in the way that you want to be going with your aim so yeah the le the way i have it is left stick is on the normal tension do not change this in my opinion and on the right stick i have the maximum tension possible on the stick and that should conclude it for the xbox elite series 2 controller again this will work with the elite series 1 it runs by the same app it runs by the same accessories the controllers probably feel a little bit different i'm pretty sure because this has a texture grip compared to the other one uh this will also work with the elite series core and obviously the elite series 2s that you, you you know guys might be buying for christmas that you can customize to make it green make it red make it blue again i wish i was able to do that i'm not going to go out and spend it on another on another elite series 2 controller just to have the color change Unless this one breaks, of course. So I will uh, also add that in at the end. If you guys want an honest feedback as well, like a kind of mini review about the Elite Series 2 controller, if you guys are interested or thinking about getting this for Christmas or, you know, just for Call of Duty and primarily like now, uh, the Elite Series 2 controller is a fantastic controller. It is worth the money in the sense of what you get with the accessory app, the way, to the way you can customize it. Uh, I think the one, like the core is pretty good as well. If you don't want the paddles in that, I get that makes the controller a lot cheaper if you're not someone who wants the paddles i think the controller with the accessories is well worth it you get a lot of accessories you get a d-pad you get loads of thumb sticks you get the different uh what you call it back attachments i've forgotten what they were called <laughs> but um you get the little key thing as well to change the tension in the thumb sticks overall i think it's well worth the money the only complaint okay this is not a perfect controller i will be honest here it is not very durable so what I will highly recommend is if you do get this controller, do not rely on just the Microsoft warranty, okay? Yes, you do get a one-year warranty, which means, you know, any fault in that time, you can replace the controller free of charge. But after that one-year warranty is done, you are screwed. And it is a very expensive controller, and I remember I had to get a repair. So this isn't my first ever Elite controller. This is my second ever Elite controller. I will warn that now. The first time, I didn't buy the warranty, and I did have to use the warranty, and then again, it broke after that. So I had no warranty, and in, in the end, because the repair they were wanting to charge me was like £110 or something ridiculous, we've also posted it back in that, I just decided I'm going to buy a new Elite controller, and I bought an extended warranty. I bought a three-year warranty with it. So highly recommend, guys, when you buy this controller, buy a warranty for it. No questions asked, just buy a warranty for it. Things like stick drift do happen with this controller. Unless you're someone who's able to like repair it yourself, then feel free to do that, but 100% get a warranty for this controller. It is not very durable. It is a fantastic controller, but the life expectancy of it is not the greatest. You know, some it just depends on the batch you get. Right now, the one I've had, I've had for over a year so far. I have not had to send it back for repairs. It has no stick drift at all, or maybe the minimal amount, but it's like so little that, you know, you can change that with the dead zone settings in Call of Duty. But yeah, it's a great controller, but get a warranty for it. And uh, yeah, so that will conclude the Elite Series 2 controller settings for this portion of the video. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut and go to Modern Warfare 2 and share with you guys the settings that I use along with this controller here in Modern Warfare 2. So yeah, let's get right into the Modern Warfare 2 settings. Right, hello guys, and welcome to the second portion of today's video. And also for you people who might have skipped the start because you didn't want the Elite, Se Contro Elite Series 2 controller or you just, you know, you're on PlayStation and can't have that controller or you're on PC using a controller, Welcome, this is the Modern Warfare 2 best settings, and I mean best settings, okay? As you can see, I'm level 28, I have played the game. These aren't settings that I've just made up out of thin air and decided, hey guys, use these. Uh, these are settings that I am currently using and having a great time with. If you guys even want to see the progress I made with this, I did do a stream the other day. Feel free to go to about, you know, the two hour mark to the three hour mark, because in the first two hours, I'm not going to lie. I didn't, I couldn't find the right settings, okay? It was a little bit difficult as well, because as you guys might have known, if you played before, you know, in New Zealand, you know, we all took that holiday to New Zealand. But um, yeah, so I wanted to change my settings in game. Obviously, I couldn't, so I had to do it out of game every time, which made it a lot harder to be able to find the precise settings that I wanted. But in the end, we found them. And you'll see after the three hour mark yesterday, my aim was incredible. And I do put it down mainly to one setting that is completely broken. I mean, completely broken. And I, I highly recommend to anyone to use. But what I'm going to start by saying here is these are just my settings, okay? These are my best settings because they are what works best for me. You guys can change and fiddle around with these. You know, you might be someone who doesn't use the certain like 
button presets that I use, or you might not, you know, you might want to use a higher sensitivity or lower sensitivity. I am going to just say what I use, and then I'm going to give recommendations on whether or not you should use certain things, you know, what you can change, what's a good, like, what's a good range for certain things like mo uh, sensitivities and dead zones, etc. So yeah, let's move into it. And also, this is for just controller, by the way. If you guys are looking for mouse settings, I am not a mouse and keyboard guy. You guys wouldn't want to see that gameplay. So yeah, just controller settings. So yeah, let's get into it. First thing, button layout, tactical. As you can see, right stick is my slide and B is my melee. Uh, personally, in Call of Duty, the melee hasn't been great for quite a few years. It's never been as good, you know, as being able to slide. Sliding isn't too fantastic in this game. It's it's better than what it was in the beta. I will say that. But um, yeah, personally, I go with the uh, sliding mechanic over using the melee mechanic, just because I want to traverse the map quicker. And instead, as you guys know, I only use one paddle on the right side just for jumping. So to be able to move and slide, I kind of like having it on the stick, just because then my thumb is always constantly on the stick and not having to go back and forth from the B button to my thumb stick. So yeah, I use tactical. Flip, don't need this uh, for me personally. I know some guys on PlayStation do with the place, the standard PlayStation 4 controller, etc. So it's up to you guys whether you do this sort of thing. But for me personally, you don't need that. Stick layout, default. Nothing to change here. Don't understand why you change this. Sometimes you might, sometimes you might. Uh, next up, controller vibration. Turn this off. You guys do not need your controller vibrating on your hand. I know some people use it to have that immersive feeling, you know, feel like they're actually playing the game. You know, it, it makes it feel more immersive. But uh, turn it off, you do not need this. It is not helpful for your aim and will just make it a lot harder for you to be more precise when aiming on the controller. All right, next up is the aiming, okay? This is the part that some of you guys might have come here for because uh, sensitivity is everything. It is the main part, which uh, also plays into the next part, which we'll go into in just a little bit, though, the graphics and that, because your field of view is also very important to your sensitivity. So I will state that now because... Some of you guys might not use the same sensitivity as me. You also might not use the same type of field of view. But your field of view and sensitivity do have an effect on how like fast your aim feels and how slow it feels. So bear that in mind when you're just doing your sensitivity. It's not just the sensitivity you need to think about. It's the field of view that you are using along with your sensitivity. So for me, 5.5. Five. And I am on Xbox, by the way. So on PlayStation, I'm not sure how the controllers feel. I've never used a PlayStation 4 controller. I've never used a PlayStation 5 controller. I don't know if the thumbsticks are more snappier. I don't know if they're more loose. These things all come into play and do affect how sensitivities feel because it might feel quick to you, the 5.5. Five. I don't know. I have no idea. So for me, and what I'll recommend is I use a 5.5, five, but personal, like the range that you should use if you're just trying to be precise and, you know, it's not about being quick in that, anywhere between a 4 and a 7, in my opinion, is what's appropriate for this game to be able to win those short range, medium range, and long range. For some of you guys out there, you might sit there and tell me you can use the max sensitivity, which is perfectly fine, but you've got to ask yourself that question, are you being the most accurate? If you can play on 20, 20 sensitivity, which I know some people do, there's a lot of people in Warzone who do the same thing, uh, then feel free. You can do that. I'm not saying you can't. If you are as accurate as possible, if you aren't missing shots, if you feel like you are being absolutely 100% accurate most of the time, I know obviously 100% accuracy isn't, isn't really that doable, but you know you feel like you're hitting your shots if you feel like you're missing your shots bring your sensitivity down just keep bringing it down and guys do this in a uh, combat training as well make sure to test your aim in combat training don't go straight in online you know into ground war into tdm whatever it may be to try out these settings you're just going to face people again it's skill-based matchmaking in this game you're going to face people who are as good as you if not better than you and if you're messing around with your settings in that in front of people who are you know doing this that and the other you're not going to have a great experience. You're going to think you're doing terrible when in actual fact you're just trying to find your feet. So go to combat training. Make sure your aim's precise. You make sure all these settings, you know, are set to the way that makes it more precise for you. But for me, 5.5, five, ADS sensitivity multiplayer on 1. You can change this lower to like 0 0.9 and stuff. I've seen people do that. They'll change it to like an 8.8 8 on the sticks or something or a 7.7 7 and then change the ADS sensitivity multiplier to a 0 0.7. So it'll make it feel like when you're aiming. So basically, you'll be able to move around and look around at like an 8 8, sens 8 8 sensitivity but it'll feel like when you're aiming you're on a 5 5 sensitivity if that makes sense so feel free to do that but for me personally i just keep it on one i like that consistent feeling again these are on one berk way maxis i've done nothing with these these are on standard aim down sight behavior should be on hold i don't understand why i'd use toggle automatic sprint i have this off i have this completely turned off this year 
um, I was using automatic tactical spring, but this year with the lack of a ability to slide and stuff, like a slide cancel, I don't find automatic tax sprint to be great, which is, is kind of an issue in itself. So the problem is the automatic tax sprint in this game will get, catch you off guard. If you're caught automatic tax sprinting in this game, you are done for. There are people posted up on head glitches here, there, and everywhere. And with the time to kill being quite fast, that's it. You, you are not going nowhere. You ain't slide canceling on them. You ain't doing any crazy movement. They are going to kill you. That is it. That is as simple as that. So for me, I have turned this off. I don't feel the need for this. The only thing that I hate that like, this isn't really, in my opinion, that as good as it should be. Like I know some people will still use it anyway, which is, again, it's up to you. Feel free to do so. I'm not saying you can't, but I'm just saying what I personally use. Um, it this this does help your controllers like thumbsticks, um, you know, last longer because you know instead of having to click in and stuff, you it just automatically goes for you. So that's the only thing that kind of sucks about this. But for me, I have this off, and again, if you guys go to my stream, you'll see the moment I turn this off, it was like night and day for me. So up to you guys. Don't have to use it, but for me personally, I don't use it at all. Equipment behavior hold, double tap ADS. Tap to reload. I know some people use tap to interact or stuff. Yeah, that, that's more for Warzone in that. But for multiplayer, I've just left it to that. And then armor plate supply one. Doesn't really matter for uh, multiplayer at all. This, though. This is the setting, guys. Okay? This is the important part. For you guys who've got to this point in the video, change this aim assist type to Black Ops. This aim assist setting, I'm not even kidding. And I even said it in my stream last night, is ridiculous. This feels like aimbot, okay? Like when you when you just aim onto someone, your aim is not moving off of that person. Like it is almost aiming for you. And I know that's gonna sound horrible for all you guys who play on PC and might use a you know use a keyboard and mouse, or if you play on Xbox and PlayStation use a keyboard and mouse, because you can do that. The aim assist type black ops is absolutely insane. I don't know if they're gonna change something about this, but I know a lot of people are not using this. And when I changed to this last night, Oh my god, was this insane. So change your aim assist type now to Black Ops. Honestly, it is incredible. You will understand what I'm talking about when you use this thing. It is insane. Obviously, you've got to pair it with the aim response curve type dynamic. Not even going to talk about the other ones. You can use standard if you want to. I personally wouldn't use linear, but dynamic is the best. It's, it gives you that small adjustment. It gives you that quick ability to you know snap on the targets when they're like further out of your, your range to be able to aim onto. Dynamic is the perfect balance. There's no reason to not be using dynamic. Just put on dynamic and, you know, fake me later, okay? If you're not on dynamic, what are you doing? Uh, ADS sensitive multiplier, one. You want it on instant. Don't understand why you're on gradual and after zoom. It, that, that'd be a very weird feeling, I'd imagine. So have it on instant. Uh, custom sensitivity, sensitivity per zoom. You could do this if you guys like snipe and stuff. Personally, for me, I've got this off. Don't need it. Make sure to change this, guys. This is your input dead zones. I've got mine on 0 0.05. Uh, if you guys have a new controller, if you just bought the Elite Series 2 controller, if you guys saw that segment in the video, um, you can probably put it quite low at like 0 0.02. Basically, put it as low as possible until you know you start to see stick drift. If you see your character moving or you see your aim like moving, you got to up your uh, you got to up the uh, stick input or the left stick uh, and right stick input dead zones. But for me, 0 0.05 is perfect. I get no stick drift on this. Uh, these are on 0.99. You can actually change them to 1, but I've just left them on 0.99. Left trigger, right trigger, 0. You want your triggers to be, you know, feeling pressed. Like, you want them, as soon as you press that trigger, you want your trigger to be going. You want to be shooting, you want to be aimed down sight. So get these to 0. I don't understand why you'd have these any more than 0. Uh, sprint tactical behavior, toggle, auto move forward, off. I've got single tap sprint on. So I'm still yet to understand what exactly this means, because... When I do it, I, I, I guess I just press and then it tack sprints for me. Works best for me, so I'm just going to go with it. Single tap sprint. Uh, on for grounded mantle. Uh, automatic airborne mantle off. Automatic ground mantle off. Uh, invert slide behavior. Uh, standard movement. All this stuff. Honestly, I didn't do anything crazy with these. Uh, yep, yeah, I got quick C4 detonation on. Uh, I haven't used the C4 yet, besides in the campaign, obviously, which was a good campaign, but I'm not going to spoil it, but it was a great campaign. If you haven't played it, you should probably play it. Um, yeah, other than that, didn't really change anything here. Nothing too crazy. Uh, next up, we move on to the graphics. So these are important. Turn this off. Just turn this thing off. Why Why would anyone use that? I don't know why Call of Duty has went down this, this reasoning of using on-demand texture streaming. It's useless. It will cause you more lag. 
because you're downloading the graphics whilst you play. I don't understand this. Just turn this off. You do not want this. It's absolutely useless. Don't know why Call of Duty is doing this. Uh, world motion blur, turn it off. Weapon motion blur, turn it off. Again, as you can see from the images, you, you kind of want to be able to see, you know? Yes, it adds to the realism in that, but it's not going to help you see, and it's not useful at all. Film grain, turn this down. You want to be able to, again, you want a more clear image. That's, that's the whole point of this. You want a more clear image. Depth of field, again, it says there, anything out, out of focus... Anything out of focus, you know, the out of focus blur effect is disabled. You don't want things blurring whilst you're aiming, because once you're shooting at a guy, you know, you aim down sight and you can see them clearly. Anyone to the left or right, you're not going to see it clearly because it's it's blurry. You don't want a blurry image. Uh, Fidelity Cat CAS, use this, fantastic. Set it to 100. No questions asked. Just do it. Your game will look amazing. I'm pretty sure this actually is a lifesaver for all those people on the uh, PS4s and Xbox One originals or Xbox One Ss and stuff like that. Because those consoles, you know, starting to lag a little bit behind, you know, things like, uh, you know, the graphics and that are starting to play, be a bit heavy on the get on the consoles and on, the, on those systems. Uh, put this on, it'll make your game look amazing. And, you know, it doesn't it doesn't put any stress on your console. So you want the game to look amazing, put this on and change it to 100. For me, obviously, I can run 120 hertz refresh rate. I am on an Xbox Series X. Uh, great console, by the way. Highly recommend. I have no faults about it. Field of view. This is personal preference. But for me, I use 100. It just it sits well for me. It gives me the ability to be able to see people clearly, whilst also being able to be able to see more, etc. And it feels great for my sensitivity and the way I've got it set up. So, yeah, when you when you guys are doing your field of view, remember this does play an effect on how your sensitivity will feel in the game and how it will look to you. So, you got to make sure you get this right along with your sensitivity. So for me, on 100, but for Everyone else, I will recommend, if you guys don't want to play on 100, anywhere between 90 and 105 is the best field of view for being able to see clearly and be able to like set your sensitivity up uh, you know, appropriately. I know some people will use 120, which is perfectly fine. You can use 120. But for me, it just feels so like zoomed out. And people at those really long ranges, I can't see. It just doesn't help me at all. It, it, it feels awful to me. But if you're one of those people who likes to play on 120... Feel free to do so, but as you guys can see as well, it does say it can lower frame rate and you know cause some graphical artef artifacts. Bear that in mind. You know you might be playing on 120 FPS and then it will dip down to 100 because your system can't handle it. You might have an older system or something like that. So bear that in mind when doing your field of view. It does affect sometimes your frame rate. You know if you've got it set to those really high uh, 120 etc. But yeah, between 90 and 105 is where I'd recommend this. Everything else. Not really important. Oh, brightness. I mean, for me, I've got up 50, bug standard. Safe area, minimum. Do not adjust this to be... Don't put the arrows at the edge of the screen because what you're doing here is you're making everything out of your focus. So say like the mini-map, the mini-map won't be in the far top left uh, of your screen, so you don't have to look from the middle of the screen to the top left of the screen. It'll be more... It'll still be in the top left area, but it won't be as in the top left area, if you, see, if you guys get what I'm saying. So what this means is you can see the mini map without having to look so far away from like your gun in the center of the screen. So you can quickly look at the mini map, go back to where you're looking, back and forth, back and forth, without having to look so far to the left or so far to the right to see certain things. It keeps everything in the center of your screen. That's what you want. You do not want your safe area set, set at the maximum distance. You want this set as minimum as possible. And uh, yeah, audio, headphone, bass boost. There's not too many options this year with this. It's kind of just preset there's not much customization here so for me i went for headphone bass boost i can hear you know footsteps this is all going to depend on your headset it's uh, more about your headset than it is going to be about the settings you use in this game uh everything is set to 100 probably should change these a little bit to be honest but the music volume is set to 20 you don't want music playing whilst you're trying to hear footsteps in the game because the music will just play over it uh yeah other than that nothing too amazing uh, voice chat up to you. What do you guys want to do? That? Uh, the voice. Vo uh, I've got this set to 100, but the microphone volume of this game is very, very low. Like I do not hear other people talking that loud. I don't know if other people have that issue. <clears throat> uh, I've got this on. Don't want to, you know, have. Uh, I don't know. I I just feel like this is more useful to me instead of hearing that annoying noise when you uh, get uh, flashbanged, which uh, happens quite a lot at the moment. Everyone's using flashbangs and stuns at the moment. Uh, these up to you what you do here again i've got these all set to normal have this on square not round i've got all these on full names so you can see people's like uh 
display, so in case you know that long distance. Uh, the tele, tele, telementary, or oh God, I, might, I might botch that, but um, have these on if you guys want to see the server you're connected to and see what um, latency you're getting. So, you know, you can check if you're on one of those 110 millisecond lobbies. You want to be ideally in obviously one of those 40 milliseconds or low lobbies if you can. Uh, I have a Doomer, so most of the time I do, but I like to have these on just so I can see that for myself. And um, yeah. I'm not going to go to the cloud network. You guys aren't seeing my IP. But uh, yeah, that is it. That is all you need. These are my Modern Warfare 2 best settings. Again, like I said, these are just my best settings. These are what works for me. Uh, you guys can see me like use these settings. Again, I have a live stream up. Uh, so you can know, take it to about the three hour four hour mark because that's about when I changed my uh, settings to these settings and got it all nailed down. And you guys will see how night and day it was for me with these settings. Obviously, you guys could change any of these settings to your preference. This is not the be-all end-all. Like I said, this is not a one-size-fits-all. You might have a different controller. You might have bigger hands. You might have smaller hands. It's, it's all preference at the end of the day. So feel free to change it around. Change your sensitivity between a 5 to an 8 or on a 20 if you really want to. But for me, these are my, my best settings. These are the settings that work best for me. And I would highly recommend to people. But the only thing I will massively recommend from this Use the Black Ops as aim assist type if you are using a controller. It is, it's broken, okay? I'm not even joking, it is absolutely broken. I imagine something will happen with it. If they don't, that's great because honestly, it is insane. It's like aimbot. But yeah, that will conclude, conclude it for today's video. This is my Modern Warfare 2 best settings and also Xbox Elite Series, uh, series 2 best settings. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to leave any questions down below you may have about today's video, certain things that you're not sure of or want to know or want some recommendations about certain things. Feel free, I will answer down below and I will try to help you guys out as much as possible. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.